look at something else. Um, so, and secondly, apologies uh, if I'm telling some of you what you have already, you know, figured out for yourselves. But um, what I'm going to try and do is, is pretty briefly, to allow some time for questions, um, give you some of the stuff which we've learnt from having run these projects for six, I think, well, no, we're in the seventh year at the moment. So I guess I, I'm, I'm talking about things from a sort of uh, management, you know, what we've learned, the sort of the, the dirty secrets, uh, you know, the, the things perhaps that didn't work out quite so well or things that were a bit unexpected, so you know, pitfalls and so forth. So, you know, as, as a general rule, th these things are, are brilliant, of course, as, as those of you will know who, who do them. Hard work, but, but brilliant. So, so generally, it's a big success story. But what I'm going to talk about is some of the uh, sort of logistical stuff that goes along with them, as far as we're concerned. So uh, the way they manifest themselves for us, as John just said, th these are week-long projects, so we do our best to clear out the timetable for the students completely for, for a week, um, and they just throw themselves into a particular problem that we set. Um, the original plan was that there'd be a briefing before the week, so they, you know, they, we, we sort of set up the problem before the week, and then f following that there'll be some sort of feedback wash-up session. Um, another, another initial plan is that um, members of staff who were running the scenarios would have a dry run before running it with um, other members of staff uh, pretending to be students. Um, and um, let me see. Um, and yeah, m quite importantly, uh, for what I'm about to say, the, the, um, the stuff that we expected them to do in the week-long projects were very sort of carefully knitted into what went around them in terms of other stuff that was going on um, as part of the teaching. So we had a very sort of what we believed to be a really nicely put together series of lectures, project, lectures, project, where one was feeding into the other. And it, there was just a nice sort of um, interchange there. So that, that was the theory. <laughs> and that's, that's happened to a large extent. But I guess what I'm going to talk about for the next couple of minutes is just some of the aspects that we, we found surprising and interesting and so forth. So in no particular order, I guess that the, the first thing from a management point of view that we discovered was that having come up with these eight brilliant projects, so we're running one per um, quarter of a year, or two, two per term, um, we realized that a year or two in that you know, we just couldn't keep running the same projects forever because you know, there's this element of projects becoming tired, members of staff becoming tired, students kind of becoming tired because there's obviously this chat between years about what to expect from the year, you know, what, what's coming up from the next year. So we, we realized pretty quickly that we needed to, to find some way of ref refreshing the, um, the scenarios. Um, and we, we, we've been reasonably effective in in doing this, I was looking at the stats earlier on, so we've, um, we started off with eight, um, and we've, completely, we've come up with completely new, uh, three completely new scenarios since then. In another couple of cases, we've changed staff. Some of them have, have evolved slightly, but even that's probably slightly less of a, a churn rate than we, we should have got in order to, you know, the scenarios don't kick around for too long. So really, if a scenario is only going to live for four years, um, according to our program, you'd need to change two a year, which is quite a, quite a challenge, actually. So thinking about the future and evolution is important. And that, that, that impacts on this whole, whole point about the scenarios and how they fit in with the, the teaching material around them, because it's difficult, we have found, and I don't think we've quite squared this with ourselves yet, to come up with a way of bringing in a new project which somehow meets exactly the same learning objectives as the one whose place it fills, whilst still being a completely... Um, you know, new feeling thing. Um, and I, we haven't found an answer for that. I think my, my, my personal candid view is that we should perhaps decouple the, the scenarios from the teaching material a bit. So the scenarios are just about getting the students excited and enthused in a more general sort of way and not absolutely require that certain things happen in them. But that's, that's a debate that's going on, in, uh, you know, as, as we go. Um, another point which has cropped up, a lot of you might have found this as well, um, we, we specialist subjects. So we try, try to give um, each student who's doing one of these projects um, an individual sort of experience. Um, and and that, that's proved quite difficult to manage in some cases. So let's imagine you know, a group of, of five students we're doing working on a project. We've often set up the project so that each student will take a, sort of ex a, a little disciplinary role for themselves. Um, it, it kind of raises this sort of paradoxical question where you know, if a student has taken that speciality in that scenario, it means other students have missed out on it. And, you know, that, there's, a, there's an element of, you know, should everybody see everything 
at some point during the whole process. I th again, I think my, my view on this one is that's difficult to achieve. You know, you just can't guarantee that every student has seen every way of solving every problem, and you need to treat the, the projects more about the excitement they had while they were doing it rather than you know, exactly what, they, what they've picked up as they've gone along. Um, individual marking. Um, I guess I'm straying into territory here that a lot of you will have, have, have um, had to, um, to tackle. I think the, the big issue with scenarios for me is, is, is trying to get students to think of them in terms of something to get excited about and just to throw themselves into with, you know, gay abandon and just to, you know, to love it and get something out of it, come out walking a foot taller, which they kind of do. But there's also, at the same time, that whole, why have I got, why have I got a B? Why have I, you know, this whole sort of got to get marks, you know, what, am I, what a mark have I got for this bit, you know? And, and the, the converse of that, why has this guy got, you know, this mark for, for doing that when, you know, I did it for him? So this whole issue of marks, of course, is, is, is forefront in students' minds. And it's, and it's one, I think, you know, one needs to figure out, figure out a way of tackling. So I don't think you can tell the students they need to be absolutely altruistic about the whole thing and just not worry about the marks at all. Um, how, does one, how does one deal with that? Well, a couple, I'll give you a couple of bullet points and, and, and probably a lot of you have got other ideas as well. Um, peer assessment, of course, is a, is a, is a neat way of uh, getting students to reflect on their own achievements and achievements of others sometimes. Um, and, and recently we've had quite a lot of success with reflective diaries. So I noticed that Anthony is going to talk about blogs in future. So we set, we set that up in one of the recent projects as a blog for students, asking them to write what they've done, what they thought of the group as we've gone along. And that, that was, we found that to be incredibly informative and incredibly helpful in um, enabling us to give a good spread of marks between groups. Because we tend to find where, where the mark is, um, has a big strong component from you know, the group mark, that marks tend to cluster around the, you know, the, the 60s and students you know, who, 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 who have really excelled maybe deserve 90 and some of them deserve Zero, in fact. So re reflective blogs, we found um, to be very helpful. Um, feed feedback's another issue. Our, our initial plan had this sort of grand feedback two-hour session planned for, I think Richard, Richard Simons isn't here to correct me, which I kind of hoped he would be, but uh, <laughs> I can sort of freely uh, make up figures. But I think we put it for a, a week after the scenario, a session to uh, reflect on what had happened and so forth. My view is that we've had more success where we've tried to wrap things up during the week itself um, because you lose, you lose a lot of momentum. As soon as that, the Friday is gone, the, you know, the fun and games are over, you know, there's a very quick tail off of excitement about it. Students want to know, um, you know, want to get a quick feedback. You know, I, I guess the, we've got this sort of dichotomy between summative and formative assessment. You know, I think the, um, the summative bit of it, at the very least, needs to be done during the week itself. What you know, whilst they're you know in the thick of it, so you know, quick feedback is helpful. Which kind of brings me on to um, what we ask the students to do during the week. So we, you know, over these however many you know twelve or so projects that we've developed now, um, we've got we've used a whole wide range of different forms of you know what we've asked the students to hand in from sort of dossiers sort of this thick, which requires the students to, you know, work goodness knows how many hours. Uh, I guess at the other end, end of the spectrum, we've asked students to produce um, videos, posters, of course, are very popular. You know, we've tried a lot. 3D models, 2D models um, have worked to, you know, varying degrees of success. I think, for, for me, the ones that have worked best are the ones that have enabled us to give quick feedback. So videos, for example, have, have, have proved really useful, you know, but videos which, you know, make the students key points um, that you can run in a session like this. Everybody kind of enjoys watching videos um, and, it, and it enables us to give the students some you know very quick feedback on the week <clears throat> um, that's videos they've made actually yeah and, and one thing you know we've discovered and probably this won't come as a massive surprise to you is that students are really good at making videos and far better of course than we are uh, John, John's efforts here notwithstanding um, so the students can, can often produce really good videos um, which are high quality I guess um, a corollary to that point is and, and the same applies with with posters and PowerPoints is that we, we find there's a, there can be a tendency towards um, the trivial when it, you know, so students treat the, the medium, you know, as, you know, maybe more of a jokey medium. So I think, you, you know, one has to make the point that if you, even if you're using a video, it still needs to pack the same punch as an executive summary of a, you know, a report that thick would. Um, I think I'll, I'll, um, I'll stop talking before too long, but uh, just, I'll just make one more, more sort of point that, uh, we're finding that increasingly we're um, 
in, in developing new projects, we're making links with, um, with industry, which I think is a really good thing for students. So I think probably at the moment, two or three of our projects are sort of directly linked to companies who, who give us resources, give us people, um, bring in speakers and so forth. That obviously goes down very well with students. But we're, we're finding um, increasingly that people are turning up and more or less saying, we'd like to run a scenario for you. Um, and I guess there has to be some sort of um, you know, quid quo pro there. And in one case, we, we have paid um, um, an educational uh, consultancy who wanted to sort of try something out. We gave them some funding to help us put something together. And, and that, that, this is what led to the reflective blogs, actually. And that, that went down very well. So I think my message to everybody is don't, you know, if, if, if somebody comes knocking and, and they've got some great ideas, you know, maybe, maybe be open to them because it's, it's, it's no mean feat to come up with these really exciting projects. Um, I'll finish off by saying one thing, and, and I probably am absolutely stating the the blindingly obvious here, but um, I mean, certainly one thing that, that I find from sort of trying to manage the process is that while the scenarios are absolutely fantastic as a marketing tool, as a, you know, they're the most visible thing in the students' minds, I think they're probably what stick in their minds afterwards, so that they're brilliant and we have to do them. They, they really punch above their weight in terms of the effort, of course, that, that goes into them. So is it managerially, it's hard work. Um, from a staff time point of view, it's hard work. It requires that a lot of staff work very closely together. Um, so it's, I'm not saying it's a bad thing, but there's a, they punch above their weight in terms of the sort of resources required. Okay, I think that's probably the point at which I should hand over to give you the opportunity to ask questions, if anybody has any questions. Yeah, no. Yeah, okay. Okay, thank you very much, Paul. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. We, we just took a deep breath and said, you know, if you've got groups of five, one of those students will have something that can take a video. And there's, there's very few people who haven't got something in their pocket probably <laughs> that can't. And the groups of five, do they stay in the same group for every scenario? Or they yeah, do you know, groups was on, on my list of things to say, actually. We, we tried more or less every permutation <laughs> of choosing groups from two to 10, to alphabetically, to um, I think one, one of the groups ranks the students based on their last scenario and sets groups up so they have the very best ones with the very, um, I don't know, I, I, I don't want to comment on the educational validity of that, but we've tried, tried everything, which I, I think is good from a student, I think that, that's another thing, of course, it's the, the forefront of students' mind is marks and who they're working with, you know, <laughs> so while they enjoy everything else, they've got those, they can't get off those, so I think mixing it up as much as possible is a good thing.